How's it going, everybody? It is your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. I'm Jordan. And we're back. This week is going to be a double feature, so get ready for that. Jordan is done with school and has reclaimed some time and some mental labor. I am post-mental <laughs> breakdown. Post-mental breakdown. We're back on the up and up. So we figured for the time that she is free, we're going to make use of that and everything like that. It makes you sound like I'm, you're, I'm like your boss, but I'm not. This is a partnership. 50-50 everything. Jordan, tell the people how your semester has gone. <laughs> it's been a semester. <laughs> It's been quite a struggle if you... Let's, let's just say that April 25th <laughs> cannot come soon enough. If anybody has experience with time travel, let us know. We would like to get in contact with you. We've just got to go January to April 25th. Specifically That's it. forward time travel. We don't really need to go to the past. So nah, I don't need that shit. We're good. We don't need to revisit that. Before we get started with anything... I wanted to make an announcement because we finally have done it. I'm showing, I'm, I'm rocking new merch because we finally have launched our new merch website, which combines the old Etsy and the old Teespring into one cohesive platform. I'm getting work, I'm working on getting the stickers added. Some of them I've been able to make print on demand, that way they don't go through us. But I do want to sell some of the stickers that we still have, which we can now do through this platform, which is a lot better. The products that they do are much higher quality in my opinion. This one is awesome. I get to pick what shirt it's on. These all are printed on Bella and Canvas and everything. And we've got two new designs. We got this one, which is the first token of the Aaronic Priesthood. And you can go and check that one out. I don't really know if I can show more details on screen because it is a metal style shirt. Anyway, go check that out. And we also did one for Ruby and Jody, which is living in distortion. I'll throw that one on screen because that one's awesome. And it's also the topic that we're talking about today, which is cool. So go and check out our new merch store. You can find it all for the listeners. It's kind of a terrible domain name right now, but we're working, we're looking into getting a domain name. But for right now, it is Jordan hyphen and hyphen McKay hyphen shop dot fourth wall dot com. I'll put it in the description so you can get a clickable link and everything like that. But go check it out. Prices are across the board lower, except for stickers. I think we put stickers at the same price, but it's awesome. Check it out. Go buy stuff for yourself, for your friends, um, for your Mormon neighbors and family members. They're for everybody, even though not everybody will like them. <laughs> oh, just wanted to bring this up because it was a little interesting and we were looking at domains literally right before we started filming. <laughs> we got I, it had on the camera. Camera, I had the camera and everything. Maybe I'll just roll it. I wonder if this is a thing. Outerdarkness.com. Dude, we could fucking buy this. We should. We fucking should. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can we can use it as the the URL for our store because you can use a custom domain. I think it's only a couple dollars. Oh, it's taken. Oh, what? What about outerdarkness.org? Could it be a dot org? Probably not, right? What the <laughs> No fucking way. What the fuck? Nah. -uh. <laughs> it redirects to the church's site. <laughs> How? How? What the hell? <laughs> what other fucking words direct to the. Seriously, what domains have they bought up so they direct you to. Uh, I think, Mo I know for sure Mormon. Dot org does. Yeah. Yeah. Mormon.org and 
I'm sure there's a bunch of other like come unto Christ and all these other weird. But outer terms. darkness. Outer darkness redirects you to the main churches. That makes website. me think that there's some trauma associated with that. Like they just did themselves a favor and yeah. Anyway, that's a fun little tidbit uh, for you to do at home if you want to do that. But that is not what we are talking about today. Today we are going to be talking about. Uh, Eight Passengers mom, Ruby Frankie, turned weird cult coaching instructor. Uh, Judy, Jody Hildebrandt, life Judy. partner. <laughs> Who knows what's going on there? We have made a couple different videos about it. But honestly, they just keep churning out stuff that just... It just tickles the brain. <laughs> It does something to the brain. I don't know, man. It is it is out there for sure. But this one, it kind of caught my eye just by the title. It was Know What Your Child Is Bringing Into Your Home. And this is Connections Coaching's um, channel. I think Ruby has now admitted that Eight Passengers was like a mistake. And I'm like, yes, we're glad that you see that as a mistake. I am... I'm terribly sorry that it's for the wrong reasons because you're like, nobody should be doing that and putting their kids out there. It just sets them up for failure or whatever. I'm like, notably after she made all the money. Yeah, right. Okay. If you're going to continue to live in truth and not distortion, like we live in distortion, give the money back or like donate it or something if you're really about your shit. Yeah, for real. That's just what I would think. But yeah, go ahead. Just leave the channel up. It might be monetized still. I'm not sure. I, I think they might have turned the monetization off or something. If anybody knows, comment down below and let us know. Let us know. Anyway, so let's do a little switcheroonie, get this going, and we'll just kick this shit show off. <laughs> How many of you parents are tuned in and really aware of what's Jump in up. your home? What magazines are on your shelves? What books? Hustler. <laughs> Do you still have magazines in your home? Who, th who has magazines in their home? If you're a boomer, maybe. <laughs> Definitely no shade to anybody who's out there getting highlights. I think highlights is problematic. Didn't we talk about that recently? Yes, we did. Yeah. Don't get highlights. It's she's, Christian, actually, which I had no idea. She's thinking about those dirty mags. Are your children reading? What are they watching on TV and who are they interacting with? These are important questions because parents are responsible for what comes into their home. I know when my children were growing up, some of the book series that I allowed in my home were for selfish reasons because it helped the kids to read, I would justify. Or it keeps... I don't want them to read because even if it helps them develop, it could be giving them distortion and messages of evil, apparently. God forbid they develop critical thinking skills. God My forbid. children entertained and they're funny. What could it hurt? Books like Junie B. Jones or Captain Underwear. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the, re the one reason. Like the, <laughs> the title was intriguing enough, but I, I laughed out loud when I heard her say Captain Underwear. That's not <laughs> even the fucking effect. title. That's not even right. Captain Underpants has been around for so long, since I was in grade school, uh, at least. Yeah. What year did it come out? And what was the first one? 1997 was the first one. <laughs> oh, my God. There's no point. There's no reason why you shouldn't know that. It's just Satanic Panic 2.0. Yeah. Do you know what your kids are bringing into the home? Ruby? A Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Charlie's Bumpers... There were many series that... What's Charlie's Bumpers? Charlie's Bumpers. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Journal of a Weak Child. <laughs> Captain Underwear. <laughs> Julia... Captain Pornography. Julia Brennan Jonesy. <laughs> it seemed harmless on the outside. However, years down the road, I could not complain when I started to see disconnect 
and my child speaking exactly as the characters in the books. I know that I definitely have trauma from reading Junie B. Jones. Yes. So much trauma. Yes. It really I, makes me speak inappropriately. Due to, due to my exposure of uh, Captain Underwear. Anytime I see a marquee sign, I go and I fuck with the letters. I, I make poo-poo pee-pee jokes <laughs> on the marquee signs. <laughs> oh my God, how perverse. <laughs> <laughs> that I was providing for them. So these are really great questions to think about as we go into discussing this mother's regret in what she let into her home. Hello. <laughs> the third person. This mother's. Oh, no. I think somebody wrote into the show. Yeah. Sorry. I <laughs> wrote it. We have to use the quotation marks because it seems uh, if you've watched other episodes that we've done or live streams that we do, <laughs> you probably caught on that we don't really believe when an anonymous person writes in well, and or we have leaves a comment or whatever. That yeah. At least one of them was fake. It's in our other video. It has happened before. Oh, and welcome back to Moms of Truth with Jody and Ruby. I am Ruby Frankie. She the mother like a robot. Right. They're the moms of truth. We are the parents of distortion. Hell yeah. So shout out. Who writes in today says, Hello, I've been following Ruby's channel for years, and I'm so glad you made this decision to make this group. Well, good. I'm glad that you're here, <laughs> and I as well am really happy with my decision to make this group as well with Jody. My husband and I have you didn't five beautiful girls, ages 23, 21, 19, 17, and 15. Our youngest, Natalie, has special needs. She's the girl in the profile picture. And she's been into the Disney Descendants since it became a thing seven years ago. Uh oh, the woke Disney Descendants. God forbid. I don't even know what that is. I don't, I don't, have, I don't know anything. I, it's fairly new so disney i'm is woke. assuming that because it has to do with a newer thing from disney disney is woke it's woke blue-haired liberalism and it's being force fed to my child at the the disney liberal land. indoctrination camp aka elementary school i so guess the di youngest was like 14 shout so out the uh, the aka the Junior high, whatever the fuck Shout they call out it. transformed wife for that analogy. Shout out. Disney Descendants is a, a movie. I think they have four movies now. Oh, it's movies? Okay. She says, my husband and I have embraced her love for it. We got her all of the dolls, understanding she'll never outgrow it due to her disability. She's always been our perfect little angel until about six months ago when she came home to me saying that some of her classmates were bullying her. I immediately knew this was untrue, as all of her classrooms that we've enrolled her in are safe, excuse me, solely for the disabled high schoolers. Yeah, because disabled people can't bully each other. <laughs> I forgot. So, yeah. Oh, they're they're so infantilized that they, they're not allowed. They can't be mean to each other. They can't be mean to each other. I forgot. God. I did some research on the Descendants movie thinking there was something in them that I had missed and was simply shocked. <laughs> shocked. All capital letters. Shocked. All, All caps. caps. The movies themselves are fine, but it's the cast I'm worried about. There are a lot of disturbing things I found, so I'm not going oh, to God. go into details, but I have found that one of the main cast members had taken their own life not even a month before the movie was released. How selfish can you get? <gasps> What the f I did not know this was gonna be like this. Are you kidding me? Holy shit. I'm speechless. How little empathy can you possibly f have? And I know when it's the the random people that subscribe to this bullshit ideology, allegedly. It's going to probably be worse from IMO, what though, Ruby's going to say. This is, like, in my experience, a common take in Mormon culture yeah. is that it's selfish. And, I mean, not just Mormons, but kind of yeah. culturally. And I can't emphasize how 
problematic it is to say that to somebody who 100 be in a space where they felt like that was an option for them and then for you to be like it's so selfish when somebody does that like really shut up yeah it really. is is like and we're talking connections has a lot of overlapping it's a- almost one f-ing circle when it comes to overlap with mormonism and i mean even myself growing up and a lot of the people surrounding me i was under the impression that if you died by suicide that you would not make it to the celestial kingdom well you that's would be, what it was you would that's lose what they told everyone basically. and then they changed their minds yeah in so, like 2015 I uh, say. yeah if you ask any like general by and large i don't want to paint, paint with a broad brush here but by and large the older generations of mormonism probably still believe that and we saw it firsthand in in the ward that jordan was in when i we first linked up because the bishop's son had died by suicide and he basically had to fight tooth and nail to get people to understand and have some f-ing empathy with him because they were all having a really tough time. And like, why would you think that about somebody if they're pain and anguish? If you think Jesus is so great and he can do anything, how is that exempt from whatever you believe that Jesus can do? Like, that makes no f- sense if that's your take on suicide then you get to just shut the fuck up yeah <sighs> wow that took a turn okay so and then she goes on that's about the tamest one i found what should i do my husband and my daughters and i have also this is her words gotten into the movies but i'm worried the actors are bad on our sweet princess thanks for all of your advice so this mom Jump cut. is is saying how selfish this cast member was. And she's not seeing the selfishness in herself. So she's quick to blame. And then she's really slow to see where her responsibility in this has been. So your daughter came to you, this disabled daughter. And, and I don't know why you're including that she's disabled other than to, um, it sounds like there's justification to endorse and get behind her love for descendants because she's never going to outgrow it. So this is like a family member you've invited into your home, the descendants, you bought her all the dolls and supported her in loving these characters, knowing these characters would be part of her life for the rest of her life because she'll never outgrow it. How invested are people getting in movies? Because, like, if you are so deeply concerned that, like, the actors and actresses in movies are going to, like, come into your home, then you may need to seek help. Because that's not a thing. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with, like, passionately watching a movie, but to think that, like watching a movie and then the influence of that actor or actress is going to like permeate your brain like what well i'm sure it's like uh among other things like oh this actor or actress is not heterosexual or, or something like that so it's like this person who is playing a different person like they are so detached from who they are they're being directed how to deliver lines and actions to take and everything by a a completely different person who has a vision that is completely different from the actor or actress's lived experience and unbelievable (laughs) that's gonna somehow seep into the performance or or whatever like i mean you should be more concerned about the director because that and the writers and everything like that because that will have more sway on the content and how their worldview has informed that content and everything like that. I can think of a million other things that you should be more concerned about than this. Yeah. That's a big commitment to get behind not doing any research. Wow. This is the issue. This is the problem. So the, the issue is not what this person said. The issue is she didn't make sure that none of the actors had died by suicide before letting her disabled daughter to fixate on this thing okay let's get behind their kids and they support their children wholeheartedly 
until the disconnect starts to show. Anytime you or me or one of our children gets involved in something that has distortion, either a day into it, weeks into it, sometimes years, and it may not even be for decades. However, there will be disconnect that follows. You get into distortion, you involve yourself in distortion, you will see disconnect. And so many parents say, my child is a sweet little angel. I never saw this coming. And then all of a sudden, my child's a monster. All of a sudden, my child's lying. All of a sudden, my child is... And then they have these complaints about the behavioral manifestations of the distortion that was planted long ago. Or maybe they're just being a fucking kid. Seriously. Well, and where's the fucking, where's the cutoff for situations like this? And for example, this, this movie does not fit into this little narrative that, that Ruby has or whatever, but this is just a, for, for instance, the matrix. And I'm not talking about it. We're just, it's just what it is, right? When the matrix came out, that was before the Wachowski sisters had come out as trans. So in the credits, it's the Wachowski brothers. So if they were fixated on the matrix and years and years after the, the Wachowski sisters came out, is that now distortion just because of what happened after? Or is it only like prior to the release? If there's distortion, then that's your when I can due think diligence. of a lot of examples of distortion in the Book of Mormon. I can think of some pretty <laughs> sick examples, but yeah. if they were on TV, Ruby wouldn't let her kids watch it. But if yeah. they read it in the Book Seriously. of Mormon, it's all right. Yeah, we can reading it in the Book of Mormon, people yeah. and shit, it's fine. Yeah, if you read that story, the story of Nephi going to get the plates, and the Lord delivers Laban, the keeper of the plates, to Nephi. He's drunk in the street, and then the spirit was like, "Kill him," and. Nephi was like, okay, and decapitates the motherfucker. <laughs> like, okay, so the moral that is so overkill. <laughs> you couldn't just stab him with his sword. Like you had to go just full serial killer on him. The moral of that story Jeez. is that you can kill people if they're drunk. <laughs> We're all fucking dead, so just embrace it. So the selfishness is you got wholeheartedly, you became wholeheartedly involved in your child's decision to embrace and love and accumulate these characters into her life. And you did zero research on who these people are, what these people stand for. The movies themselves. How is dying by suicide taking a stand? <laughs> what the fuck? It... Oh my God. You said are fine but it's the cast you have a problem with, the movies are not fine. The movies are full of deception, hiding, stealing, tricking. Okay, so that rules out all kids' movies then. Basically. Done. None of those. Yeah, have you seen Cars 2? Have you seen any There's guns Disney movie and ever? Killing, killing other cars in Cars 2. Yeah, her kids oh, Jesus, dude. are not consuming any... Yeah. Material, basically. Dude, I don't even know if you can consume coca melon at that point. <laughs> Probably not. They're tricking each other. <laughs> They're tricking. They're singing about untruths and God lies. forbid. And they're singing about Satan worshipers. <laughs> there are many underlying themes of distortion inside the movies. And you're not seeing it. Or if you are seeing it, you're choosing to justify it. Let me add okay. emphasis on the buzz words. I'm trying to highlight to you while also being accompanied by a slow cadence to make it sound like I've really fucking thought this through. Jump cut. Jump cut. <laughs> also slow you blinks. Choose. Have you noticed? I was trying to incorporate that. I don't know if my I mom I does might have that just and it annoys me. Eyes wide open. When she's <laughs> trying to make a point, I'm like, please stop. Renege on that responsibility. You are being selfish. Damn. Anytime someone 
drops responsibility for themselves, it's selfishness. It's inherently selfish. Well, what does selfishness mean? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you, you're defining selfish different than me. So let me define what selfish is by first defining what selfless is. Oh my Being God. selfless means I love me. It means I care for me. It means I take seriously the words that I say, and I am a man, I am a woman of my word. If I say yes, I mean yes. If I say, oh. wow, this is truly groundbreaking. This is riveting. Just, I never thought about that. Nope, never, never crossed my mind. Yeah. Somebody has been taking courses about consent, apparently. <laughs> Although she's not applying it to that kind of a situation. It is only applying to this dumbass situation. It seems like she never got over the low featuring T-Pain by low ride of incident. <laughs> or flow ride of That's incident. what's permeated her brain. Yes. She, she was like, this person is mad about descendants. And guess what? I'm still mad about the Apple low Apple bottom thing. jeans. Apple bottom jeans. The f and boots with the fur I'm, I'm just molding i'll do that i will do that if i make a commitment i i i make the commitment with my heart and i will follow through on that that is being self-loving that is being self-loving that is caring for my soul i thought it was selfless it means i will show up honest and responsible and humble in every scenario i'm in Every word is a and, synonym. And if I see to Joe, to that Ruby. I I wasn't responsible, or if I can see that I wasn't dishonest, I clean it up as soon as I see. And I am constantly on the lookout for truth, because I'm a truth seeker. That is what being self-loving and selfless means: is you seek for truth. Now. Wow, a truth seeker is a person who seeks for truth. Just riveting it's just fucking word salad every yeah, single right? video dude how many years did did jody go to school and this is what she's telling her like <laughs> fucking jesus <laughs> my dude my two-year-old could tell you this he said grocery store for the first time today that's pretty fucking impressive in my book <laughs> more than more impressive than this he's not in distortion <laughs> the opposite of that is selfish it means I'm shellfish <laughs> A lot of people are allergic to it. I'm allergic I'm to Ruby. Truth. I'm seeking for what feels good. And this mom's daughter found something that made her feel good. And so the mom thought, oh, yay, she feels good. I'm going to get behind her and support her with no thought of, is this responsible? What kind of... She's watching a fucking movie, not using drugs. God, can't we let people enjoy things? Seriously. Ruby is def probably at the front front of the in city hall meeting when they're talking about how video games convert to mass violence. Like, dude, is your parenting l really that feeble that <laughs> you can't like push back on these ideas? And the, the the most trouble thing, the most troubling thing about most of this stuff is in these kids' movies. A lot of time they present it in a way that you identify this is a bad thing to do you shouldn't do this right in a lot of cases maybe not all the time but of uh effect is this cast going to have on my daughter is my daughter worshiping this cast or is she enjoying it as a movie and if she's enjoying it as a movie why, why isn't any of this distortion bothering her? Probably because it's not bothering me. I need to get really curious why this distortion doesn't bother me, why I'm okay with it as a form of entertainment. Being a parent who is looking out for the best interests of their children means the parent is going to slow down everything that comes into the house and filters it. We have all flown okay. planes and gone to the airport, and we see the screening process. I've never flown a plane. <laughs> I, I would like this Ruby. Is, this doesn't apply to me. I, I would like Ruby to get on a plane and fly somewhere far, far away <laughs> without the internet. Preferably an island. Yeah. With Jewel, like with Jody, just take them both. Yeah. 
get on an island retreat and don't come back. <laughs> and we make jokes about the screening process. And without giving my opinion on if this is appropriate or not, I want you to look at the principle. I want to point out the principle. The airlines don't want certain things on their airplanes. And so they are screening what comes onto the airplane. Now you may or may not like that and I may or may not like that. And that's the principle. If you don't want something in your home, you screen it. And you, the mother, you, the father, have the responsibility of screening what comes in your home. And Get this, Ruby. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna clue you in on something real quick here. There are people who do that for you. They literally rate the film for the audiences that it's appropriate for. Can you believe that? And historically, they've been really fucking hard on these movies. There's a whole documentary talking about that. You're probably not appropriate for you. There's boobies. Vid. And they say <laughs> But crazy, it's, right? Ruby is vid angel is too progressive Dude, for Ruby. right? <laughs> That's not enough. That's not enough. Vid angel isn't enough for me. It's embarrassing, though, because she really thinks she's doing something here when it's like, this is in my mind, like basic human intelligence, like every parent generally is monitoring what comes in and out of their home, generally yeah. speaking. Are there some that don't? Totally. But I would say by and large, with my experiences and the families I've worked with, people are pretty aware yeah. of what's coming into their house and they're not going to let them like be doing drugs in the bathroom, but they're not going to get their garmies in a bunch over f***ing Disney movies. Yeah. I, I mean, I by and large trust what's on Disney. Descend. It sounds like it's more geared towards teens. I I don't know why I'm calling it a kids thing. I just classify everything on Disney as kids, because that's what it, the only thing that we ever watch. But like even we are screening generally what I'm always there if my son's watching something, especially when we watch stuff on YouTube. I don't fucking trust YouTube for shit. It's, the other day we were sitting right there just chilling. And some kid's video on YouTube was showing something that scared our son. It wasn't anything was, like... Yeah, nothing like... It was just weird. It was weird and it made him afraid. So I was like, what the fuck? Blocked the channel and moved about our day. But I was right there and like instantly knew what was going on. So like, I guess if maybe... It sounds like Ruby is just taking like a backseat on a lot of these things where she's like, oh man, these Captain Underwear <laughs> books well, really I would, had a bad effect on my kids and I was not screening or whatever. I would argue in my like professional experience, I would argue that involving your kids in the screening process and like allowing them to have a part in it because we want buy-in we want investment yeah so like if you have the opportunity to watch something with your kids and you're not a fan of it and then you sit down with them and talk about it and they're like how do you feel about this because i'm not the biggest fan and if they're you know going to be a teenager like is it really realistic to think that you can just keep them in your house and never let them watch anything not even yeah. disney why not like, why not make it a family experience where you sit there and you outline how you feel about things as it comes up rather than just not giving them any opportunity to learn about these things and see it in action or anything like that. Well, to just like a blanket statement, apply things like this and be like, this is wrong. All of this is wrong. And yeah. I'm like every parent screens to their comfort level or allows kids to engage in behaviors to their own comfort level. So like doing blanket statements for yeah. like parenting decisions is really challenging to do. Like some things, sure. But in this case, it's. Yeah, people are not going to have a problem with this movie. Plenty of people. Ruby. And a small group of people are going to have a problem with everything. To me, what I'm just feeling right now, it's uh, a fear that her children will have an opinion and challenge her opinion. Hmm. 
because I'm the mom. I'm always right. You kids are the children. Shut the f up. I can't tell and you. I'm going to tell you what's right. I think that's fair. And I can't tell you how dangerous it is. And having been raised in this fashion to have a parenting style where you teach your kids to blindly follow or accept authority, no matter the circumstances. Like, I can't tell you how harmful that is. Like, as a parent, you don't teach blind obedience to authority um, because that's harmful. Because what does that get used in that gets used as, you know, and taken advantage of? That's a manipulation tactic. That's abuse. Like, it's not a healthy thing to do to have your kids always respect authority. Like, if you're giving your kid a punishment, they can, in a civil way, ask you about that punishment and you can engage in a dialogue about it. It doesn't yeah. mean that they're being defensive or, you know, trying to be a shit. Like, if you're a parent that's willing to have a dialogue with a kid like that, that punishment is going to go eons beyond what you would have hoped because they have buy-in and understanding and investment now. So, like, this just is, like, For bad real. parenting 101. Well, and it just comes back to those ratings. PG stands for parental guidance. So you can be there with your children and have these conversations and things like that instead of just, I'm the authority on everything. And when I screened this, I didn't like it. One thing. Plus, they always there's a lot of stuff that they put in there that will totally go over kids' heads in a lot of instances. That's there for the parents because they know that it's rated PG. The parents should be there. And if you don't like that, well... Get Go your mind out of the gutter. It. Yeah, make a video about it. Go scream, cry to your principal. Scream, and say cry, how throwing up. <laughs> pissing, shitting, <laughs> everything. And this mother dropped her responsibility of doing such. And now she's saying, what do I do? Well, now you're in a mess because you have spent, I don't know how long... Um, this girl has been into this seven years. Oh, seven years, seven years. You've been supporting this for seven years. And now oh my you're God. seeing the, 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 who the f would want to be a part of this little group that they have. I hope she left after all this. they ever do is shit on people. This is Swear like to God. mom shame to an extreme, like to an absolute extreme. But it, think about it in the cult mentality of you have a problem we're going to kick you while you're down and then the solution to your problem is something only we can provide yeah only we can build you back up mm -hmm. after we've broken you down and if you can't handle that then there's the door disconnect now you're seeing the problem and and now now you're complaining about the cast members it was your responsibility to look up and see who these people were. It was your responsibility to look and see what your daughter was consuming. This is counterintuitive to what she's trying to do. Because if you're, like, any time, like, working as a therapist intern, like, if I'm working with a parent who wants to go about things a different way or do things a different way, my job is not to shame them for doing it wrong the whole time. Like, we're wrong we're yeah, going to say. improve the things that they are like i want to do this better and i'm like cool great and so we're not going to go back in shame and we're not going to feel guilty for the things that we did we're just going to shift our mindset and focus on okay how can we do different this time and so they are dwelling in the shame blame critical area when in reality yeah. we should be celebrating like if it was not this scenario we should be celebrating the fact that like you want to do this differently and it's for the benefit of your kids so like hell yeah let's do it but yeah. instead she's gonna fucking kick her in the gut and be like you stupid piece of shit like piece of garbage are you serious you failed your children and literally and this person reached out for a bonehead fucking reason i'm not gonna i'm not gonna let that slide by any means but they're in a framework where they're like, oh, these people, they help people like reform their beliefs and everything or whatever. And <laughs> they're reaching out in sincerity and this is what they get in return. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I understand this is a grift, but how the f do you make money off of this <laughs> when this is how you operate? Your daughter is vulnerable and, and you just handed over something that she liked. And when you have a child who doesn't discern, 
Ch- children, all children are learning to discern and they are relying on the parents to discern, to keep them protected. Discern these fucking nuts, how about that? <laughs> we protect them physically. And if you're not discerning, you are not protecting them. Does she protect them physically? Or does she cause physical harm? Shut your fucking mouth. Emotionally and spiritually. You must discern. And it's taken you seven years to discern the distortion. And now you see the disconnect in her behavior. So I think... (laughs) Or get this. She could just be exhibiting bad behaviors and she likes (laughs) descendants and there could be no connection whatsoever. How about that? (laughs) Also, bringing it back to the research, how far down do you have to go? Do you have to check out who's writing the score? Do you have to learn how to read music and understand musical motifs to see if those are truth or distortion? Where was it filmed? The costumes. Oh yeah, was it filmed in socialist California? Communist California, whatever the f*** they say nowadays. Was it across the street from a a displaced person? In, oh yeah. (laughs) Did they have an extra on set that broke into the Mormon temple and is now being charged with a felony just because they didn't want to freeze in the Utah cold? I don't know. Ruby, I think you need to outline your parameters for how much... uh, needs to go is it just the people that are on camera because there are a lot of extras a lot of times is it the the people who write the cgi well think about this though if because she's afraid of the gays right so if you were to watch a movie and potentially someone who is closeted about their sexuality or their gender identity and you don't know about it and you still watch it then what then what then what that's exactly what I was bringing up with the Matrix thing. How do you know? I mean, they were, regardless of the context of the the Matrix, which is a pretty strong allegory for being trans. Um, what's up with that, huh, Ruby? Have you ever, she has mentioned that she likes worldly music. Is she cut that out of her life now? Because a lot of that old rock and roll a lot of those people are pretty awful. Who built her house? Like we we got to get down into it. We got to get to who who is she purchasing groceries from? Are if you go to the checkout stand and that person has a rainbow pin on their apron, are your is your entire grocery haul now void? It's null because it's distortion. Your your groceries are You're distortion. You're eating distortion. <laughs> If the it, shopping cart you use. What if it was used by a... A gay. <laughs> a gay beforehand. <laughs> she does say that she takes the shopping carts home, right? <laughs> That's a well, deep cut, but... <laughs> oh, my God. Can you take that shopping cart home now? <laughs> what if she exists in the vicinity of a gay person? I really think she's yeah. so disturbed. What do you do if your neighbors are in distortion? Like, you can't... Your neighbors are going to influence your family, right? In some way, shape, or form, just by giving them looks. She lives in the state that we live in. Our distortion is at peak max. levels, honestly. And so it's like <laughs> radiation. She's probably getting it in small doses, being she's, far away. She's being suffocated by our distortion. Uh, Jesus. It's pretty clear. It's pretty clear what came into her life and why she's acting the way she is now. And here's my question. Are you willing to hold boundaries? Are you willing to live by principles? She's going to be heartbroken. Heartbroken. She's going to cry. She's going to be confused when, if, you take these dolls away and say, you know what? I I have a lot of repenting to do. I did not keep you safe. And I allowed you to have this. For seven years, I got behind you and supported you in this. And now one day overnight, I'm not. I am sure you're going to be very upset. I'm sure you're very confused. It would make sense. I am so sorry I didn't keep you safe. And are you going to hold when your daughter is upset? Are you going to hold it? Or are you going to allow... 
I'm so glad that Ruby leads by example when she's telling other people to punish their children for their own shortcomings. Children's tears feed Ruby's soul. Seriously. But I'm thinking from a former sped teacher perspective, like it, she she talks about her daughter as being, it sounds like pretty severely disabled. And so depending on even if there's an understanding on this child's end of what's going on, like the complex nuance of this topic that Ruby's talking about with this parent, is that something that is even going to make sense to them? And this isn't coming from like a deficit perspective, but truly like if you're going to take away something like that from a kid who may not fully understand the reasoning, like yeah. that's just fucking cruel. And like, yeah. if you follow that logic, like if it's truly a severe disability, like, are they going to be picking up on like the fact that an actor is that isn't even in the show anymore died six months ago? Like, what does that have to do with anything? Yeah. Like, why would you just take something away from a kid that they enjoy? Seriously, you think your kid ha is exhibiting bad behaviors now? Take something away from them with zero fucking reasoning and then see how it goes. Because that's 100% valid in my opinion. If you don't give a good reason, and I don't give a fuck if you think that you don't have to give a reason to your kid. If you're gonna be punishing them like that, you better fucking give them a reason. Because then that just sets them up for failure down the line. Well, and especially if you're after you've been doing something for seven years, like yep. anytime a parent changes like a disciplinary strategy or how they run their household, even in a small way after they've been doing the same thing for seven years, like there's gonna be an adjustment period for those yeah. kids in the house and for the parents. So like it's not and they're like even older teenager kids are gonna have a problem wrapping their mind around that. Yeah. So this is just f on like fifty different levels. I, just, I don't get it. Like I I give my son, my two-year-old, reasoning for everything I do. I don't even know if he if he really gets the gist of what I'm saying most of the time. That doesn't matter. I'm just still going to lay it out for him as if he were an adult. Because if I set that pattern now, it's something that will continue on into our relationship when he's an adult. When having a kid, like engaging with a kid about a punishment um or like a consequence isn't going to like diffuse the punishment like they're still not going to want to do it yeah but the least you can do is explain it to them instead yeah. of doing the because i said so do parents do that from time to time and sometimes sure does that mean you're a bad parent absolutely not but it gives your kid a sort of sense of understanding where you're coming from if you want an awesome tip a lot of kids in my experience, have been really successful at picking their own punishment. There you go. And in my experience, kids that do that, a lot of them, not all of them, a lot of them will pick a punishment that's a lot harsher than the parent actually intended. So it's really an opportunity to explore and open a dialogue with your kids because that alone is going to be more reinforcing secure attachment than any fucking thing that ruby's doing right now for real all right let's bring this bullshit home and then we'll conclude her to decide what comes into the home i hope you'll consider and remember your responsibility and that you will do the truthful and honest and most emotionally healthy thing for you and for your daughter Wow, she really never addressed the uh, selfishness thing. No, she didn't. Hey, you're a fucking terrible mom, you stupid fucking piece of shit. Thank you for yeah. asking this question and being part of our group. Thank you. We love you here. Yes, I agree. People who die by suicide are selfish because I'm a lecherous bog dweller who literally does not have any ounce of empathy in my soul. That's why I hate my own fucking kids when they are just being kids and being annoying. And I didn't make any attempt to raise them because I was too busy uh, being in front of the camera and making my entire family about me. And I just had to punish them because I was too busy doing something else. 
Ruby is going to be a classic case of that, like, really grouchy, bitchy, abusive old woman that you know that's like, my kids never come and see me. Setting yourself up. Yes. Good job. Also, I want to make it clear, if it wasn't clear already, suicide is not a selfish act. If you are a person where you're thinking, I can't believe they did that to me, turn inward and think why that might be the case, that it's their job to continue living through their suffering and their pain for you. Just want to lay that out. Lay that out so everybody's understanding. We don't play that bullshit in this on this channel in this fucking household or in anywhere that we go so um i know they got shit on but fuck you to whoever that was if it wasn't jody or ruby because that is just like the most brain dead fucking take i've ever heard in that my is life. definitely a jody or ruby take without it i believe it and jody or ruby prove it to me because those names, they sounded pretty pretty made up, if you ask me. If you ask the me. lack of empathy and understanding is really just kind of startling. Seriously. The lack of, the sheer lack of compassion. I mean, Ruby is the worst, but I swear every additional thing of hers that we watch is just like... The worst thing I've ever seen. This is the worst thing I've ever seen, and I hate it. <laughs> I don't understand why they don't do like an intro or outro because there's jump cuts in there. Mm-hmm. Why didn't they, like uh, certainly you have a little prefab intro and outro like we do. It's really easy to make on like Canva or whatever. What happened there? I don't know. That's done. Quality gone downhill down Distortion. the shitter. I guess they don't have they're not making enough money to pay somebody to edit them very much. So. Not eight passengers money. That's for damn sure. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Ah, uh, that really came out of left field. I did not expect that. Clearly, we did not watch this beforehand. Oh, man. Anyway, sorry to anybody that caught off guard. I'm going to put a little, like, uh, trigger warning beforehand. Um, so, it doesn't. hopefully it doesn't catch anybody off guard, but sorry if it did. Other than that, you know that we... We're trying to bring you the best and the brightest on this channel. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, clearly, this one hit the nail on the head because, uh, holy shit. I'm flabbergasted today, and I'm ready <laughs> to just <laughs> close this out. In conclusion, <laughs> you you got to be careful. You never know who's doing what, where, and what's getting into your home by what means. <laughs> it's basically what Ruby was saying. Watch out for those magazines. Watch out for the magazines. It's it's the highlights and it's the what's another children's magazine? I've only ever heard of that. You gotta be say, scrutinizing what? of the highlights because apparently there might be a closeted person who writes for highlights and makes their little word searches or whatever. Because that is something that you really should be Is is it like any is there any more evidence that needs to be thrown out there that these people are so homophobic to the point that if you watch a movie that stars a non-heterosexual person or a non-gender binary conforming person that you shouldn't watch it? Does there need to be any more fucking evidence out there? So yeah, if you enjoy what we have to say about in response to things like this, then you should subscribe to our channel. You should save our podcast. You should become a member of our channel or a patron. That would be awesome. I kind of just squished a bunch of the things that we do together. Um, Yeah, subscribing, viewing, being part of our live streams on a weekly basis. All those things help us. And you can support us further by going to our patron, Patreon or joining our channel as a member you get exclusive content and free content um the likes you can uh, get more information about it down below or on our patreon patreon.com slash jordan mckay you can visit our new merch site i already said the the link you can visit it down below or uh you know go to the link itself and get some cool threads like what i got here we have a couple other things 
there's a koozie over there that it's too far for me to reach coffee cups stickers and there will be more to come i'm looking at other products that they have to offer and working with them so go and check that out if you would like to follow along with other stuff that we have going on you can follow us on instagram or on tiktok you can find us on you can find us on either of those platforms by searching at jordan and mckay we also have a super cool discord that you could join the link is down below we love our discord community and it's just a lot of awesome people so you could be one of those awesome people and make cool friends and have fun conversation about memes and just vibing and shit like that thank you everybody who stuck around to the end we love you we cherish you especially in this end of the year season while we have a little retrospective view of the year and we will see you next time